Hey guys, I've been thinking a lot about art lately. Well, of course you. You're an artist. I know, but hear me out. Art is all around us. It expresses our ideas, our priorities, our points of view, and our subjective experiences. It can be manipulated to support the group in power or champion the oppressed. It brings us joy and shows us the depths of our despair. It both reflects our highest ideals and our basest nature. But some art can be challenging to understand. What good is art like that? Artists try to make sense of their world. They look for ways to say things that can't be said in words. That takes creativity. Lots of people are creative, but since you are asking about art, let's talk about that. Sir Ken Robinson, Professor Emeritus of Art Education at Warwick University, defines creative activity as the process of having original ideas that have value. While it is somewhat easy to identify what is innovative in art, deciding what has value is a bit trickier. Deciding if something has value opens up a Pandora's box of questions. Value for what? Value for whom? Is value determined by cultural tradition, point of view, economic factors, practical concerns? What else? Could value be determined by finding significant meaning in the art? Art can be a complex and sometimes slippery thing. What exactly is it? Is it an object? An idea? Perhaps it exists in an ethereal place between our intellect and our senses. Our senses sometimes protest when it sees something that the intellect hasn't sorted out. You may have heard the saying, I don't know anything about art, but I know what I like. This is an emotional defense of this discord between sense and understanding. But our mind is a powerful tool. Perhaps this discord can be mitigated. I want to really be able to analyze art beyond a surface description. Philosophers and historians, artists and art critics, have thought about this problem for millennia. Because art and culture keep changing, these questions remain unresolved. We need a way to decide for ourselves how art is relevant and valuable to our lives. If we're going to study art deeply, we need to address these questions of value. But that study needs to be intellectually honest and rigorous. We need to try and get to the bottom of what the art in question is about before we can gauge its relevance, significance, and ultimately its value. One effective tool for decoding the meaning in a work of art was designed by Dr. Renee Sandell from George Mason University. The FTC palette uses the categories of form, theme, and context to decode the essential aspects of an artwork so we may discover its meaning. Dr. Sandell has outlined some criteria for each aspect of the FTC palette. In the video, Discovering Art, the Search for Meaning, we looked at these criteria in depth. Let's quickly review them here. Our first contact with an artwork is through our senses. An artwork is made of various elements some physical and some temporal. The physical aspects of an artwork, things like line, shape, color, etc., need to be organized in some coherent way. This organization we call composition. Some art teachers at a school known as the Bauhaus came up with a list of these formal elements and principles of design to help explain the abstract art that was prevalent at the time. But these elements and principles don't work for all artworks. We need to understand that there are other things that can make up an artwork as well. The theme is what the artist is trying to express. Sometimes an artist's message is very obvious. It may be literal or metaphorical. Other times it can be very subtle or even intentionally hidden. It may be symbolic, conceptual, or theoretical. The something the artist is trying to express, we're going to call the big idea. Again, we need to break down what theme means to make sure that we are on the right track. We need to be careful because sometimes the subject matter of the work of art tabletop full of everyday objects, say, is only a vehicle for the expression of the big idea, in this case, the fleeting nature of life. Artists, like anyone else, have a point of view, prejudices, are informed and misinformed. They are influenced by other art and cultural ideas and their own interpretations. They are shaped by as well as help shape, 
the times in which they live. This leads us to the third piece of the puzzle in our search for an artwork's meaning, context. Artists, whether consciously or not, are influenced by the zeitgeist, a German word for the spirit of the times. Current and historical events make up their world. Politics, society, academic and technological advances all influence an artist's understanding. This influence on the artist is critical to our understanding of an artwork's meaning. Let's follow three artworks. We will have to do some research to understand what the essential elements of each work are. We'll do a quick annotation of each work's form, theme, and context, and then we'll get into a more sophisticated analysis. Will that work you? Sounds great. I'll start. Jericho's Raft of the Medusa was painted in 1819. This painting was a departure from previous European painting, as it depicted a current event the sinking of the French frigate Medusa in 1816. He used a traditional and accepted approach found in history painting to depict the aftermath of the disaster where 147 people were set adrift on hastily built rafts. Only 15 of these people survived by the time they were rescued 13 days later. Jericho was influenced by the expressive figures of Michelangelo and the use of chiaroscuro by Caravaggio. The composition shows the range of human emotions from despair to renewed hope as the rescue ship is finally spotted on the horizon. Let's use one of Jack's paintings, as he is often misunderstood as an artist. Jack's painting style was radical for American art in the 1940s. He was looking for a more immediate way to create an art for the modern times in which he lived, an art that had a life of its own and did not refer to history, allegory, or nature. He laid his canvases on the floor and used sticks, hardened brushes, and other non-traditional tools to drip his paint as he moved around the canvas. Time magazine dubbed him Jack the Dripper. His style of technique moved painting off the easel. Jack claimed that when he was painting, he was not aware of what he was doing. Rather, he was engaged in a mutual give and take with the painting. That's a pretty good explanation of my paintings, Vin. Let's take a look at another genre of art besides painting. It can sometimes be very controversial. Performance art poses some interesting problems while trying to decode it. That is especially true in a case like this, where we're seeing a photograph of the installation that is already a recording of the actual performance. The evidence we are looking at here is twice removed from the actual event. In one performance artwork, Taiwanese artist Der Xing She punched a time clock in his studio every hour on the hour over the course of a year. This means that no one except the artist experienced it from start to finish. This type of durational performance is both a physical action and a conceptual realization. In the After the Facts installation, the video does provide some movement, and there is color, but these elements are secondary, and focusing on them may mislead us when searching for the meaning of this work. So we've annotated our three artworks looking for basic information about form, theme, and context. So you, let's ask some questions that will take us beyond the scope of those annotations for a deeper analysis. Jericho's painting serves several purposes. He chose a well-known incident that he knew would generate public interest as his subject. The painting itself is quite large, so there is a feeling that his subject must be important. The figures are almost life-sized, and he places the figures close to the edge of the picture plane so that the viewer almost becomes part of the scene. The violent contrast between light and dark highlights the drama. The political situation in France had been tumultuous since the French Revolution. Napoleon had been defeated by a six-nation coalition in 1814, and a pre-revolutionary monarchy had been restored. The king had appointed the Medusa's unqualified captain, and the ensuing disaster of the ship's sinking pointed out the corruption of the restored monarchy in some people's mind. The painting becomes an allegory for this governmental ineptitude. When the painting was exhibited in the Paris Salon of 1819, Jericho's technique was praised by the critics of the time, but its subject matter of disaster and realistic portrayal of corpses disturbed some who thought that painting should be about pursuing an ideal beauty. Jericho had been deliberately confrontational both politically and artistically. The painting is a bridge between a neoclassical style portraying historical or mythological subjects and a romantic style which showed ordinary people 
the triumph of human emotion and denied mythic or heroic ideals. Abstract painting can be especially hard to interpret because there are often no allegorical or representational aspects for us to latch onto. Jack's work is a perfect example of this. His work is often ridiculed because of his technique, and unlike in Jericho's painting, it is hard to determine Jack's artistic skill in the traditional sense. Jack's approach to painting challenged the very notion of what a painting was or could be. He painted on the floor, moving all around the canvas, and used non-traditional materials and tools. When it was suggested to him that his painting lacked a relationship to nature, Jack's response was, I am nature. His emphasis on a subjective relationship between artists and artwork reflected the growing idea of the individual and relativism spawned by the post-World War II affluence of Americans in the 1950s. While Jack's work was championed by art theorists, the popularity of his work remained mostly in art world circles and did not extend to the general public. Now that we've come closer to the meaning of an artwork through the synthesis of our annotations and analysis, we can evaluate the importance and relevance of the ideas the artwork communicates. No one can question Dershing Shea's commitment to his work. He completed five year-long performances between 1978 and 1986. But Dershing believes that art is not a career, it is his life. In the time clock piece, he punched a time clock in his studio every hour on the hour for an entire year. That meant he never slept or left his studio for more than 50 or so minutes during the year. His work is both conceptual and physical. His investigations into the nature of time use a year as a typical unit of human measurement. The self-imposed limitations on him during the work made the passage of time palpable. He had made statements such as, life is a life sentence, and that we'll all consume time until we die. In Time Clock Peace, his repetitive actions illustrate that while each moment in time is unique, we often do the same things over and over. Dershing says his work is not political, but is open to interpretation. In Time Clock Peace, he wears the drab uniform of a factory worker and uses the machinery and the time cards typically found in a factory. The photographic evidence taken each time he punched the clock shows his physical transformation over time. There is an element of failure in Dershing's work. He missed 131 time card punches through technical difficulties or oversleeping. His allusions to repetitive and sometimes meaningless aspects of modern life, coupled with questions about what we do with our time, make this artwork relevant to our world today. So what do you think, you? Do you think the questions we've shown here will help you analyze art more deeply? Absolutely. The teacher in my art course really wants us to analyze and write about art in a way that shows a sophisticated understanding. These questions will help a lot. There's even a tool called the Artomatic that will help guide your questioning and analysis. The annotation of the three artworks in the video were made with it. You can find out more about it by following the link above or in the description below. Thanks guys. I knew you'd come through for me. Anyone up for pizza? Jack's by. Wait, what? Hey!